Yeah, basically. I'm glad it's not me, but this is a better option. <laughs> Let's see how this fight goes. It's Cambodia versus Philippines in game number two. Will this be the composition that they needed to bounce back against the Philippines? Let's check up on the emblems here for this match. Okay. Uh, taking a look at the emblems, right? They're they're quite different here. Still, I love that you know you have uh, the Atlas running the focusing mark for Unigo because that's going to be huge, especially if you get a multiple Fatal Link setup. Uh, the the bonus damage across the board, and then you're talking about stacks here, right? Also, take note too. I believe that is Weapon Master for the Sicilian, and then the Rupture. So you got that penetration. You've got Impure Rage. This is interesting, right? I mean, this is why. At least for me, I don't know if I speak for other people out there, but I love the emblems, I love the talent system because you have these kind of variations happen. Yeah, you have two agility uh, emblems as well for tier one uh, for Cannon and Unigo, but on the other hand, we have three tenacities present of Cambodia. Some tell me, yeah, this might be their way of sustaining this kind of uh, team fight for Philippines, but if they want to have this kind of safe passage, they need to, might want to go also aggressive since team fights could need might happen since they have the S on their side. It's completely an extended team fight happening over and over again. Yeah, I love too, you know, the fact that you're really looking for scaling here. Now for Philippines, the fact that you have a Sicilian who is basically the mage version of Aldis, right? You're just stacking, stacking, stacking at one point. If you don't end the game uh, before it gets too late for Cambodia, then you're dealt with a hero alone that can almost one-shot someone from your team, if not multiple people, right? So then you're really relying on this Novaria uh, as well to kind of help you through the course of this game. Going back to it, if you had a key to victory here, OSX, it's like I said, early game, you got to be able to control it. It's in the hands of Cambodia to do with the lineup they have and their own version of basically an Ube Strat here. Well, speaking of Ube Strat, positioning, we have ADM and Super Shima, or Shima here on the turtle. Three members present. Both the teams are ready. Look at that Astral Echo. And okay. Recall. Fatal Link's going to come through. Still working on the turtle. They're going to be able to find it. It's ATM. Saison goes in. Still going to be looking for a kill. But the sustain isn't enough. ATM will fall. Now D7 on the hunt. Unigo does fall to Chuma. Can he help out his teammate here? Chuma D7 on the run. And not going to be able to find the connection with Cat, Forcing the rest of the team back here one for one. Turtle secured, though, for Cambodia. Great way. A great start for their own composition. We're going back here on to a Team Philippines. They're still, look, they're still looking on clearing up mostly of the camps of Cambodia. If they're up against the, the jungle of, uh, of Ashima or Cambodia here, clearing up more or taking out, out of resources from Cambodia can force them into the lanes to show up or even to aid their gold lane. Yeah, and with that being said too, you know, I mean, early on, Despite everything that kind of happened there, you really don't have much of a difference in terms of economy for now, right? But as the game goes through, you really want to be able to just either extend those team fights in your favor for Cambodia, and if Philippines plays around that, if it's initiating a fight, getting the Blessing of the Moon Goddess and the other healing components out, retreating and then coming back through, using the, the fatal links available to them, they have so many options, right? Then that's one of the scary things that Cambodia has to deal with here. But still, you know, at, at this point in the game, they're checking their box. This is what I was saying for Cambodia. Control that early game, have the best uh, kind of driver's seat in the early game that you can as they kind of clash out here on the top side. Not sure if they're still gonna be able to commit to this. Chama showing face, trying to keep them at bay. Unigo, though, does have that Fatal Link, so they don't want to get Fatal Linked into the turret here. Yeah, still securing the objectives for Saison, taking the orange and the purple as well right in his own camp, and as well as taking out from Cambodia on the mini camps here. So pushing everybody into the second turtle, this is the buff or even the economy that they need to push back because oh. at this point, look at that, Cannon trying to pull ADM out. So still, Seekat as uh, the ultimate is still being drained out as well. Okay, well right now, the battle for the second turtle of the game, ATM, trying to push them back. Gets already that Phantom Execution, so that's great for them. Still fighting for dominance and space around the turtle. Heal's gonna come through, Cannon taking the brunt of the damage. Holding them back the best he can. Turtle gonna be secured by Saison though. Surprise, now here comes the clap back. The Fatal Links is gonna fall. They're looking for the kill, and Ego on the run somehow survives. Not enough follow-up damage just yet. The Bism Strike gonna miss as well. Tough here to deal with. No kill happening except on the top side. Fury will...
they're on to the fact that they want to have a secure way of trimming down or slowing Philippines completely, they might want to target the scaling heroes here. So how will they do that? They would, they would need to be, or they need to set up more crumbs for the Philippines to follow. But as we can see here, they're, the side of a team of Philippines are much more disciplined no matter how the trades go by. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, even with trading uh, kind of between both the teams, you still have a, a lot of great options. Whether you're trading, whether you're pushing and pulling, and, and kind of that's how you approach, you know, an Eztez across from you. You just need to be able to get to the point uh, where you can negate some of that heal, especially with the itemization. But I think that's also why it's so crucial that you have Unigo on this Atlas, right? And running the focusing mark even on top of that. Because if you can manage to get the multiple members you're looking for with the Fatal Links, find the setup there, you throw that focusing mark and then there's a blazing duet at the same time, that might be the answer, you know, to some of that sustain here. With that kind of setup that Philippines could do, Either way, he needs to have more defense that he needs to have because if you're up against a lineup with an Estes, the back line probably is more secure than ever in sustaining everybody out in those kinds of ambushes, even ganks. So, yep, that could be a great way of bouncing back if you are Team Philippines, but it's might as well be waiting for the right items to even soak up for that moment once you get that perfect set. Yeah, right now, cross-map play for both teams. Here is the focus on Seacat. Saison should be fine. Just showing himself. Again, third turtle of the game is going to be up in just a second. And that's exactly a preview of what they got to watch out for, right? Uh, just the, the Sicilian, Sicilian stacks are going to keep happening. We're almost at the seven minute mark here. So they got the vision. They're able to spot out Unigo. Trying to counterplay around, getting Fatal linked here into the turtle. They got to watch out. There it is. There's the sustain too. Flicker comes through as well. Still going to be looking. Cannon will fall. Meanwhile, Recutiano was waiting in the mid lane. Trying to clear that up the best they can, so they only lose a member. Turtle also goes out here. Now the onslaught in the mid lane gonna force them back here. Cambodia though, with a little minor Ooh. lead. Saison though, fancy footwork, bobs and weaves, stays alive. Here comes the defense, Argahel Rekutiano present. Now with the flicker out by the usage of Unigo, Ultimate first, having the safety out of that kind of way of being pinned down by two members of Cambodia. Might as well be waiting for the right time to strike. So looking back onto his defense, he still has only steel leg plates. And if we're talking about a good set, he needs more damage to even, more defensive items to even go in the back line of uh, Cambodia. As you can see, Blade of Haptasis and Blade of Despair present for a few point where they're in a good position to fight. It, it, in terms of that, it comes with time in this game, right? It really does because scaling should be going in the favor of the Philippines as the game goes forward, right? So now Cambodia, once again, still maintaining a very minor lead at this point. It's, it's nearly minuscule, right? It doesn't even matter in terms of gold. But what does matter is the space you have to work with. They at least have that one turret advantage over. Philippines, they're still putting pressure here in the bottom side as well. Yep. Pushing or getting into the difference, Archangel has now the Lightning Truncheon and the, the Clock of Destiny. It, he was ahead by one level XP against Seacat. So that is a ticking time bomb that we're trying to mention. And opt for the Quick Mana region as well for the Demon Shoes. They're completing everything. This is just attributes scaling towards the late game. Will, Cam yeah. Will Cambodia delay something like this? Because if you're going passively, like you're doing, or if you want to keep doing that, this is a challenge that they needed to pull through. Either they, they're so prepared for the late game yeah. uh, threat that they have all the damage, they have the defense, well, might as well be in a great par with the Philippines to uh, build up on those kinds of momentum in the late game. Super important, right, that they, they are able to handle that. Now, look at this, Cambodia already just given the go signal for the first Lord of the game. Meanwhile, still Saison trying to work in that purple buff, but he gets the news. He's got to be here for the fight. Fatal Link's going to come through, but look at the damage comes through. It is secured by Philippines, but they're going to fall here. Double kill for ATM before he's taken out himself. The flicker comes through from Fury, able to clean up a kill. Cambodia might have lost the Lord here, but they get the three kills. Wow. Three members down, trying to delay the late game threat of Philippines. Not too far on to the gold lead, a hundred difference. Cambodia is eyeing to finish this game early on. But looking at this trade, they have the Lord.
Yes, the Philippines has the Lord, but the Porsche they need, is the one that they need to worry about. Okay. Well, this is already a huge start, right? Because Fury now having the three kills, he made a bit... Oh, we actually get a good replay of this, how it unfolded, right? Now, things went in favor of Philippines, at least objectively. But as that fight unfolded, even the decisive action for Fury to kind of flicker in, clean up that kill, these are all doing wonders for this lineup for Cambodia. Yeah. And that's the thing. Unigo need, you got a good set. Yes. Well, oh, ADM. Rokidiana gets killed. That was quick. Slowly getting his scores or hit A's up. But going back on the thought on how Unigo managed to get two, you see how the replay uh, Cambodia sustained that fight? And that yep. was the threat, right? It's a growing threat. But on the other hand, wow. they're growing all the magic burst damage that they need. Because if you're up against the setup of Cambodia, you have the Malefic of present for Fury. But if you want to force out something here, you might want to isolate members here of Cambodia. And even with that, right? That was, again, the first Lord of the game. Philippines, even though they lost three bodies, still able to get space around the map. D7, though, getting really close. There's the Fatal Link's going to cut off Chamal. Is the sustain enough? It's not. Art Angel able to get a kill using this Sicilian, like we mentioned, scaling into the 12th minute almost. So right now, Cambodia. This is the first time in a while, actually, for the majority of the game, that they have fallen to this 2k gold deficit. It's trying to hold on to the tier one in the mid, keeping space in their favor, but it's getting increasingly harder to do. Yep, the window, the window of Philippines is about to show here. 12 minutes, six to four. Now getting focus on to the jungler still on uh, Shima. Wow, Saison on a three level gap ahead. Yeah for Shima here. Which is crazy, right? Given how kind of the game has unfolded, you know, for the most part. And Saison just, even if he's not able to get all the kills he's looking for, he's still farming up out of his mind. And you can see that. They're holding on to this tier one the best they can, which is crucial because if Cambodia can do that, leading into this next Lord, it at least gives them this minor advantage. What they have to keep kind of tabs on is that bottom lane. Look, it's already being pushed and you can expect Philippines to put pressure there, at least to split up Cambodia. They know if they don't have that numbers advantage, they've got this amazing set potential with Unigo. And they're actually just gonna go ahead and give this quick call for the Lord. No response, they're just gonna get cut off here. Says unable to secure it. Just like that, Philippines takes the Lord from Cambodia. Okay, a good macro control here, because if you're talking about gaining control over the lanes by the Philippines, most of the time Cambodia was answering so much yeah. onto the kills, all those small things as you mentioned, right? So with all the discipline that the Team Philippines has right now, it's the late game. They're trying to be more patient, more disciplined on how to approach this. The threat right now, yes, it's eminent, but in being lined with the items they're trying to build in right now, it's one way of pushing or having a clap a against Cambodia. There's a push coming in from up top. Cambodia needs to have a good defense here. You know, that's hard though. Like if you look at their lineup, it's actually like their, their base defense is quite difficult. You know, you don't have a ton of uh, clear potential unless you burn uh, most of your resources, most of your ultimates even, even the Abysm Strike here. So they're gonna lose this turret, still looking to put the pressure in. Philippines now setting their eyes here to the second options out there. And in terms of shield sustainability and just durability overall for your team, through those methods, you know? So you gotta be able to find the answers here. And it seems like, at least for now, Philippines has done a relatively good job at handling that, right? So it's great that you have sustainability. Fury is having a relatively good game, right? You need to allow him to just kind of pop off in a lot of these team fights. And if that means ATM has to kind of sacrifice himself a little bit to get, you know, the Abysm Strike off, some of the penetration as well, then that could be one of the best plays that Cambodia can make. But what can't happen is for them to continue to give up lords, right? At least not uncontested. Not now, yeah. At least not uncontested. Mm -hmm. And it's 15 minutes, and if you want that, as you've mentioned, looking at back on the items here, we have the Holy Crystal present for Seacat. You, you would really want to have that pair of the Imperial Rage as well if you are an, an, an Uvaria. At the later stage of the game, this is where the Vyra shines as well. Yeah. So we have, we're looking for uh, two answers now from uh, Seacat and Fury to be paired up, but that's a good question that you're putting in the table here. Who will be the sacrifice? Who will be the front line of Cambodia in the defense of Philippines that has now? And with this kind of uh, almost 5.5k gold lead, 
they would really want to contest an objective, or will they, or will they still keep doing the defense that they've been doing for the past minutes? Yeah, the, again, you don't want to see them just not contest the Lord if it is taken, because you saw how fast the, the previous one was taken from Team Philippines, right? Okay, that was a... I believe that was taken. Yes, it was by Seacat. So there, I guess that's a glimmer of hope, right? In terms of your defense here and lining up for this next Lord take, you at least have a purple buff. You should be able to give the vision and everything else some poke as well to your team. Holy Crystal being picked up here by Archangel is already huge in terms of the stack. And now this additional magic damage. Wow. Look at that, though, right? Seacat is a threat. Also just picked up a massive item in the Divine Glaive. So they're in a good position to actually contest this. We'll see if they can pull through. Cannon, wow, will take a lot of damage. Unico, though, has to go back to base. Again, Seacat is a component to this as they force themselves into position for the Lord here. Going to be worked on. Archangel throwing out those bat wings here. Lord now less Wait. than one-fourth. Cannon trying to get a position. Here comes Seisun. He's going to go for the retro battle. Goes Rekha in. Diano. Takes it. Rectiano up top. From the hands and in the top side, it's going to be pushed in by Rectiano, and it's just like that. All eyes on the Lord with the push into the base, something we haven't seen too much this tournament. But of course, it's Team Philippines that does it. They forgot the base, and there was a wave pushing through, and they were much more focused in getting that objective. To